Lotus Amira V6, an exploration of speed, braking, and build quality challenges. Whenever we get a Lotus at Motor Trend, we can't help but joke about British build quality. However, when the all-new 2024 Lotus Amira V6 came in for performance testing, the humor quickly became reality. After several attempts, we finally obtained some numbers from the Amira, and in terms of build quality, it proved itself to be quite bryish. Amira stops, then stops completely. Our journey to the testing grounds was uneventful, and our first evaluation of the day was brake testing, which, for the Lotus Amira, turned out to be its final test. On the initial run, we accelerated the Amira as required and then hit the brake pedal hard. The Amira came to a halt, but when we reached for the shift lever to shift back into first and prepare for another run, it had gone limp. It seemed the lever was no longer connected to the gearbox, which was now stuck in fourth gear. Peering through the mesh showcasing the shift linkage, we noticed what appeared to be a loose cable dangling below the metal components. With only fourth gear available, we realized the Amira was in no condition for a proper acceleration run. We called Lotus to retrieve the stricken sports car. A few days later, the same Amira was returned to us. The issue, it turned out, was a loose nut in the shift linkage, as opposed to our usual problem, when a nut gets loose behind the steering wheel. Pop goes the Lotus. With the Amira repaired, we resumed testing, this time combining acceleration and brake tests, since speeding up also necessitates slowing down. Our first two launches, at 3,500 and 4,000 RPM respectively, caused the Amira to bog down. Our third launch at 5,000 RPM showed potential, but we fumbled the 3 to 4 upshift before hitting the quarter mile mark. The Amira's shifter, while offering a satisfying mechanical feel, has long throws and narrowly spaced gates. A peculiar combination that makes it easy to miss a shift when attempting quick gear changes. We decided to try 5,500 RPM for our fourth launch. We revved the engine, released the clutch, and pop. That's not a sound you want to hear when trying to get a manual transmission car moving, or when it's already in motion, or really, at any time in a car. And the Amira was certainly not achieving motion. Another call to Lotus, and another flatbed rescue followed. The problem? According to Lotus, an axle snapped. No further details were provided, but we assume a half shaft gave way. Let's try this somewhere else. For our third attempt, rather than repair the car and return it to our California crew, Lotus sent another Amira to our satellite office in Michigan. You know what the cliché says about the third time, right? This Amira finally made it through testing, with all significant parts still in operation before and after the process. So how did this latest Lotus do? First, acceleration. Wary of our high RPM experience, we kept our launch RPM between 4,500 and 4,700. This time, our issue was with the rev limiter and what appears to be some lag in the tachometer. The engine should rev to 6,800, yet we kept hitting the limiter at an indicated 6,000 RPM, which caused us to botch our initial one to two shifts. Once we got the dance steps down, the 400 horsepower Amira showed us a 0 to 60 time of 4.2 seconds and ran the quarter mile in 12.6 seconds at 109.7 miles per hour. That's slightly behind the last version of the Lotus Evora, the Amira's predecessor, we tested, a 2021 GT model with 416 horsepower from its version of the supercharged Toyota V6, which ran to 60 in 4.0 seconds and took the quarter down in 12.4 at 113.3 miles per hour. However, the Amira's times were a near exact match for the 400 horsepower Evora 400 we tested in 2017. Only the trap speed, 111.0 miles per hour, differed. A consistent performance. We found braking tricky but satisfying. It's tricky because the Amira's pedal box is small, spacing is tight, and the go pedal is narrow. It's one thing to aim your foot precisely when you're concentrating, but in a panic stop it's easy to catch the accelerator with the side of your foot. A few drivers even mistakenly grabbed some clutch, too, because those pedals are identically shaped respond with the same stiff waiting underfoot, and also crowd together. Braking improved as the tires warmed up, and our best stop from 60 was 100 feet even, 4 feet shorter than the 17 Evora, 401 foot longer than the 21 Evora GT. That's close enough for government work, and, by the way, consistent with the results in our second attempt at testing before the axle broke. 
Finally, the test we were waiting for. Handling? After all, it is curves, not straight line driving, that Lotus cars are all about. Only the third of Aura made it this far in our testing regimen. If we were conspiracy theorists, we'd whisper among ourselves that perhaps Lotus sabotaged the cars to try to build up the anticipation. First, some raw numbers. The Amira V, 6 circled the skid pad with 1.06G of lateral grip. We don't think we need to tell you, constant readers, that anything above 1.00G is supercar territory. Our highest ever recorded grip was 1.19G, by three versions of the Porsche 911 GT3. And yes, the Amira outgripped the Evora GT by a little, 1.04G, and the Evora 400 by a lot, 0.97G. Better times with a better shifter? We use the figure 8 as our measure of handling, as it combines grip, response, and speed. The Amira set a 24.0 second lap time at an average of 84 centimos. That made it a bit slower than the 2021 Evora GT, which had a best lap of 23.6 seconds with similar recorded grip. We did not record a figure 8 time for the 2017 Evora 400. Such a time puts it on par with previous gen versions of the Aston Martin Vantage and BMW M2 CS. Not unobtainium quick, but good company among the sorts of cars bought by in the know enthusiasts. That said, we think we could have shaved a tenth or two had the shifter not been so reluctant to do its business. From the driver's notes, for as good as this car is to drive, the shifter totally ruins the experience. It's the most mechanical, analog part of the car, and also the worst part of it. Too high of effort, too long of throws. Beyond the numbers, the Amira is awesome. Why were we so frustrated? Because of what the numbers can't tell you, which is how sublime the Amira feels. As good as electric steering has become, there is a difference, and the Amira's hydraulically assisted steering does feel unique among today's performance cars, with no shortage of useful communication. The Amira's chassis balance reminds us of the reason to stick the engine in the middle of the car. There's a fine line between under and over steer in the Amira, and Lotus makes it easy to flirt with the line or lean into one side or the other with easy control and correction. As we've discussed in past Amira stories, the big question for the Amira was whether it could maintain that Lotus driving magic while presenting a more spacious, luxurious, and better quality cabin compared to the Evora, and relatively speaking compared to other cars, of course. This is still a Lotus. The answer, mostly, is yes. The Amira is a nicer car than the Evora it replaces, and our instrumented testing shows it to be just as strong a performer and handler. Sadly, build quality is apparently still an issue. Sure, Motor Trend's instrumented testing is rough on the cars, but it's something to which we subject every vehicle we can, from Versus to Veyrons, and few of them break with the same persistence and zeal as the Amira. We love the Amira and what it can do, but don't expect those jokes about British build quality to stop anytime soon. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.